Hi everybody, on behalf of Pocket Wizard, my name is Doug Gordon, and I'm here to talk to you about not only Pocket Wizard, but the relationship between shutter speed to aperture. Now here's one of the things that people don't really realize. What do the two affect? Now obviously both of them control depth of field, but the biggest thing that's gonna control it is basically your lens source, the wider the lens, the more depth of field, smaller the aperture, the more depth of field. The closer to the subject you are with your lens, the relationship between your lens and subject distance-wise is going to give you less depth of field. Now, one of the things I always try to do when shooting is I look to shoot from a light to a dark, I'm sorry, from a dark to a light area. I want to try to put my subject in as much of a shadowed area as I possibly can. So in this case, I'm in my studio and I'm facing out towards a major highway. As you could tell, we have a wonderful background on it. Now what's happening is I need to slow down my shutter speed, which is going to allow more light to flow through. But I want to accent the light on the subject. Now there's not a lot of, it's flat existing light, so how am I going to do that? I'm going to work with an off-camera light. Now I'm going to work with my Pocket Wizard, which I have my TT1 on camera, as well as my AC3, and then I have my TT5 right over there behind camera. That's set up, just so you know, at about 45 degrees to here, to the basic relationship of the background, because I already know what I want to accomplish with my subject. On a wedding, everything's kind of ought to be planned out ahead of time, because you don't have time for these things to go wrong. People like quick, quickness, they want it to be done, they want it to be over with. So what the Pocket Wizard allows me to do is make sure that I'm able to change everything basically directly from camera. So what I'm gonna do is bring you right over here, beautiful. You're gonna turn with your back this way. I wanna back you up in here. Now, what's key is her placement to the light. Because if I bring her forward, I'm not really gonna be able to hit what I want to in terms of the light. It's just gonna fill the back of her. So what I'm gonna do is bring your hands up here, turn your body sideways for me, I want you to push your hip back, but I want you to turn your head over your shoulder. Now the key here is going to be the placement of the veil. I want to try to cover up as much of the arm as possible. And there, and now I want to look here, but I want you to look at what's happening. I got her face into her arm, which is only going to make her bigger. Now her hand placement is everything. Turning the hand on the side, She's holding it up, side of the hand, so I'm lighting here. Do I care about filling the front of the dress? Not really, but here's the thing. I've already decided that I'm gonna shoot this at about 10th of a second. I'm gonna slow it down dramatically because I want that light to burn through. But what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have small aperture, I'm gonna be shooting at F16, and that aperture is set for this light to hit her face. So turn a little bit more sideways, okay? Chin up a tad. I want to make sure there's no distractions in her profile. So that light I'm seeing is going to come across right here. And it's going to set up a beautiful veil light, but it's also going to set up a beautiful profile light. So let's see what we get. So remember, we're a tenth of a second. We're at F16. I'm on tripod, slowing everything down tremendously. I'm using a 70 to 200 millimeter lens, which is going to help to compress the background. My hope is that the shutter speed is slow enough so that I'm able to allow the background to burn in. If I don't like anything, I always have the power to change it from camera with my pocket wizard. So let's take a look. My camera height is right up around waist level. A little bit higher than waist level. Right there, my center cropping. Again, I'm a tenth of a second, F16, and let's take a look. You could hear the slowness of the shutter speed. So what I'm looking at when I see it is I have the profile or light that I'm looking for. But what I'm not liking this is no kick to it. So what I want to do is I'm going to lower the power coming out of that. That's my A light. I'm going to bring that light down just a tad. And by bringing it down, I'm going to get a little bit less light and I'm going to start to create a little bit more vignetting action. Just like that, you're looking straight down again. And let's take a look. And if you look, what's happening now is the background is burning through, but I'm creating a dark vignette from the front side. So it works beautifully. Again, working with off-camera light is key. Now, here's the thing, you don't realize that if I was to use my speed lights, it would have a difficult time picking up from angle to angle, especially if you're outside, you're on a beach or whatever it may be. I don't have to worry about that when I'm using my units. Again, keeping it simple. Working the off-camera light. Everything that you do is what's gonna happen working it from camera. I want to control as much as I possibly can 
from camera. I can't stress that enough to you. So what I want you to do is you're gonna come forward to me just a little bit. You can come outside. Okay, now from here, I want you to bring your back through here and I want you to spread your arms for me, looking down. Now kick this hip in here. Now what's key is I wanna make sure that I don't lose her bust by making it larger than it needs to be because there's so much skin there, I don't want that to be the focus of the image. So what I'm gonna do now is bring that light, which for the whole time was behind. So I'm gonna turn her head, she's in profile. I'm taking my light right here and I'm looking again to keep it almost at about 90 degrees, but I wanna change my zoom. At this point, my zoom was on 135. I'm gonna take my zoom and I'm gonna kick it all the way up to 200. I wanna set up a beam of light. Turn your head to me a little bit beautiful. Kick that hip out and looking down, again, bringing the veil over, making it so we don't focus as much on the skin in here and the light's gonna come across, feathering across the body. So let's see if we have to make any adjustments from camera. So she set, eyes down, beautiful. Looking absolutely perfect. And let's take a look. And if you look now on the first image you see, we're burning up within the body. So that's the last thing we wanna do. So we're gonna take it down a total of minus three. So we're bringing it down minus three, chin up a little bit, Jen, looking straight out this time. Eyes up, chin out, chin up a little bit, up, 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 smiling beautiful, just like that. And let's see what we're getting. And now look at the difference. You have the beautiful light striking across, and I made my adjustment directly from camera. I'm not playing with aperture. I'm doing everything directly from the PW unit. I can't beat it. Again, everything you do, whether it's weddings, portraits, communions, whatever it may be, needs to focus on one thing, keeping it simple. That's it. Simple, fast, efficient changes. The more you can work from camera, the better. We'll see you next time.